good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming here. My name is Ron Munitz. Uh, I am leading the PSCG and PSCG Holdings, a couple of companies that do all kinds of things. Um, basically, the PSCG Holdings uh, is developing a couple of ventures, and one of them is related in this way or another to what I'm going to present, that is, let's say, mobile uh, botnets. Um, techniques and anti-techniques, let's put it this way. And the other thing that I've been running for the last couple of years uh, is actually a services company that does embedded uh, consulting and training for basically everything that is Android, iOS, IoT embedded uh, related. So. We do a lot of things. Um, security apparently is our main business, uh, but honestly, it's just a side product, at least from my perspective, uh, for more or less understanding operating system. Hopefully, much more than less, okay? Um, so this is what we do. We do training, we do all kind of stuff. We have nice customers. Hopefully, we'll have some more nice customer. And basically, our services company funds and the ventures we are doing, uh, so it's pretty nice to work with us. All right, so this talk is quite informal, so please feel free to interrupt at every, at every second that you might uh, want. Um, a lot of the topics, as opposed to my regular talks, are less technical and less in details. I mean, here's a proof. I'm away from the computer. This doesn't happen. A talk of mine, as you can know, like from yesterday, looks something like this. Sometimes in their very relaxed pace, sometimes people are dead like during the talk because there's so much information, not enough time, or we need like to run like crazy, okay? So please feel free and, and let's begin with uh, our topics. So essentially, I'm going to talk about two kinds of things. Um, I'm going to talk about enterprise and the so-called old world. And when I talk about it, I don't mean necessarily that things that don't happen today, but I talk about computers, desktop computers, servers, laptops, everything that is not mobile, because it is one ecosystem that is interesting. And the reason why I'm going to focus on it, because Speaking of like time that products, both offensive and defensive, had to actually, you know, make it like to the market and have not necessarily good solutions, but solutions that sell, there has been a lot of time for that. And for everything that has to do with botnets in the desktop world or in the server world, then there are gazillions of companies that have products and they sell, and some of them do a very good job in many things. So I separate it and because in the mobile landscape, some of the things are like very new. I can tell you from experience that up until 2016 or 17, like nobody even addressed what is called the native mobile uh, landscape. And later on when they did address it, people do very, very, very bad work. And believe me that I know because I help companies to evaluate some of their providers. Um, so we start with the enterprise world, and essentially uh, later we're going to talk about a, the mobile world. So first of all, speaking about frauds. Um, in the enterprise world, then the motivation for anti-fraud solutions is quite obvious. We want to avoid all kind of like money stealing, all kind of like reputation problems, and all kind of other things like that. And when I'm talking about reputation problem, then we mean that, let's say, that if somebody steals a credit card, let's say, or uses a service that is authorized to someone, and it does it like in a non-legit way, then even if there are no money problems, even if there is insurance, and then it's from the insurance company, and even if everything seems like okay, then there can be like very, very bad implications to these kind of things. So actually, one needs to be able to moderate and protect against all kinds of roads in this thing, which is quite, quite, quite obvious. And the question now becomes, what is like the threat modeling? So if there is like this uh, hacker kid or script kid or whoever, however you want to call it, I'll try to be more formal because we're 
video now. Usually I would go and in some places that are like with brackets and are supposed to be sensorized, I would go and like say things that I'm super not supposed to be saying. But I would try to avoid it, although it makes talks a lot more interesting. And so basically, when we talk about this script kitty or about this single person, then the question is if organization should even care about it. Sometimes yes, in like 99.9% .9 of the cases, if it's not like a very well-scaled attack, nobody cares, it's not even worth the money of an organization to protect against, okay? Like, this is life. So, the question's always like in threat modeling, is like, okay, what are the risks? How much it costs to, if like I get breached, let's say, how much it costs if I, to actually have a solution that pre prevents against it? And then we see like, we do the trade-offs and we see if it's interesting or not. Now, basically 99% of the cases, not. We don't care. There is a problem, no worries, let's pay. End of story. Why do we need all kinds of security companies? Let them go and play with them other. So, bottom line is that if attack is like not on a high scale, it's not interesting, period. Okay, so speaking of the enterprise world, there are quite a, of a solution that exists in all kind of like terminologies, and solutions will be highlighted in green. The slides are not so beautiful, but the colors are like very clear. So you can see, for example, all kind of like, okay, let's see if there is even something that's going on, right? Like IDS, and then like preventing them, there are going to be all kind of, okay, let's go and try to trick them and like identify if there is a problem and not have like the real servers breached. So honeypots, there are all kind of systematic behavior and statistical analysis, AKA cyber ML, AA, AI cyber, all this kind of stuff, cyber, 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 you know, billion percent of the companies would say, yeah, we do AI, cyber security AI, machine learning security. So this is systematical behavioral and statistical analysis, okay? Like, this is the truth. And then there are all kind of like solutions that are going to actually, you know, be preventive. Let's even see if there are problems. Or after it, like incident response, and there are also actually, you know, actually, especially like in Singapore, for example, there are many, many, many things that can be prevented by, by, by governance, by regulation, by simply controlling, let's say, the traffic uh, medium, let's put it this way. And for example, preventing things. I'll give you an example. I saw some people from Grab uh, the other day. Anybody here works for Grab, maybe? No. So an example for this, like, okay, we are afraid in Grab that people would register to our app with all kind of fake credit cards before arriving Singapore. So you can see as an external, sorry, that you can't even like pay with credit card or register if you're not physically in Singapore. Like the application behaves completely differently like if you're inside or not inside. Now, I'm not here to analyze anyone's security like models or solution, but it is a fact, and it is a fact can that can help in mitigate at least some kinds of like attacks. Like, we don't care about people that are not in Singapore, and once you're in Singapore, yes, you can pretty much reliably identify if communication is coming from inside or from outside. Technically speaking, you know, if you have control on all the routers in the country, which there is, let's presumably, I don't know, but I believe so, I have no reason to believe otherwise, then you're all covered, everything is good, and you can cut a lot of like outsider attacks and like concentrate on whatever is in your country. So this probably applies to a lot of other techniques that I'm going to talk about also, but the world is not just Singapore, okay? Unfortunately. And so another interesting vector is actually um, all kind of things of like, okay, so we are like a bank, at least in my country, it surprisingly works like this. Like all the banks are using uh, terminal services, like Citrix and solutions like that, um, which is actually what I offered in my previous startup uh, that did a virtualization of Android. And what we offer now as a platform, we'd be happy to talk about it like offline with you, it does the same thing because we're recording now. And so basically just going ahead and say, okay, like if our problem is remote, it also moves the, the, the attack surface like somewhere else. 
So this, there are so many solutions for the enterprise world, so many. And surprisingly enough, um, like nothing is amazing, which is okay, but there are solutions, cybersecurity company sells and life is good. But surprisingly enough, in the mobile landscape, then there are no good solutions for almost anything. Now, I hope I have enough time to talk about all kinds of things that I know and analyze them and say why there aren't, but I will talk about at least a little bit, okay? So in the mobile world, let's, like, let's take a look of like, okay, what is different in the mobile world, except that it's like relatively new, like we've been having mobile devices for the last 15 years or so, and you know, we've been having enterprise software since forever, and we've been having internet for 30 years or so, 30, much less, 20 something years or so. And so we did have time for that, but basically I wanted to talk about three points that have to do with the mobile landscape. So one of them is essentially that in the enterprise world, we can just decide that everything is going to be internal and that if we have any mobile apps that are related to the enterprise, only allow them when you are in the enterprise network, maybe even only when you are in particular uh, access point, and then the problem reduces to classical enterprise things in terms of having your clients on mobile devices. So it's less interesting in this perspective. The second one, is that the second observation is that in the consumer world, let's say you download Grab, and no, I don't work for Grab, or you download Angry Birds, or you download a, a low world application for a iOS or for Android, whatever it may be, then basically there is a lot of things that are accessible on a device that anybody could have, even if all the logic, all the important logic is done on the company servers. So why is this important? Because you can actually use some confused deputy, like take advantage of a device that communicates with the servers and in this way or another, either sabotage behavior of others, for example, in all kinds of scenarios, or just you know, do things that you are not supposed to be doing. So this is a problem. The problem is like what you have on the client and if a client gets you know, the server like allows it to connect to it, whether it is legit or it's been breached, then it is or it is. Another type of applications that is, or threats that are important is that for a lot of applications, then you just have a lot, a lot of things on the application itself. So it can be like particular IP, even of the developer that says like, all right, like I'm going to now do machine learning solution, not on the cloud, I'm going to take advantage of like Google or Apple's framework, and I'm going to do a lot of things on the device itself, so even if it's not connected, I'm doing all kind of stuff. So one can go and like uh, say, all right, let's see what a developer does, and yada, yada, yada. And the other thing is that when we want to be efficient, there are always caches, and there are always all kind of ways, and like yesterday's uh, servers are today's apps. So a lot of time you have applications that have so much data that is in the device itself, that it becomes another type of threat and is, it's important because it's very likely that even though there are all kinds of like scanners, even by like Google or iOS, like Google Play Protect, if you know it, safety net or some APIs like this, if you're more Android guys and girls, then it is very, very, very likely that they will never find out that all kind of data is like being breached or taken. Mostly because like Google Play services care more about like the device integrity and whatever is like in the read-only partition and so on. So the mobile world is different in several ways, especially that whatever you have in the device itself is not controlled. What it means in two words or in two sentences is that you can go ahead, completely replace the operating system that is like everything that is below what the application runs. And there are billions of ways to identify, but for every way to identify, there's a way to pass the identification. In one word, I can go ahead and instead of Android OS, I can, uh, I can create Ron OS, where I modify every system call to, be, to do something that is like a, 
unnoticed by the application developer, unnoticed by anyone, and I can do essentially whatever I want, okay? Now, basically, um, here comes something that is interesting and important. Yes, of course we care about it for like banking apps, for insurance apps, for everything that has like uh, transactions. And I'm very, very, very well aware uh, of like the players in the industry and what happens when like money is stolen. Like, you know, cybersecurity and insurance, they go together always, at least almost always. But I'm not going to talk about these things, okay? So for the sake of just being honest and for the sake of completion, I'm not going to talk about the entire ecosystem. Let's assume that like insurance and what happens if something happens to someone is not interesting for this talk. What is interesting is that like there are many, many, many markets except for like banking that actually drive what is known as mobile phones. And what drives it is not the financial apps, but just the applications that are like more childish or more dumb or like less interesting. Mostly games, okay? Life is a playground, but mostly games drive this and all kinds of other applications. So surprisingly, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of fraud and a lot of like uh, illegal or non-legit transactions on things that are supposed to not interest anyone. That is life, okay? So this is something that is very, very, very important. A lot of companies, gaming companies, advertisement companies, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the ecosystem of it very soon, they started caring about it only recently because it's actually, frauds are part of the ecosystem and it's an intended part of the ecosystem that I'm going to talk about. But basically, there are a lot of issues here. So essentially, like, whether you like it or not, and you are a company that develop an application, or like application and services and servers or whatever, then the user have control of several things. So first of all, you can go ahead and like breach information of the application user, and then people would go and say, hey, what's going on? You violate my privacy, what is this, why is this, and so on and so forth which by the way, there has been a lot of changes in the Android framework in the last three or four years that would like, they would scan your applications if you do, if you send information about like the user in an obvious way. So in the past you could like ask for contacts, uh, permission to access contacts, and you could go ahead and like put all the contacts, send them immediately, and this application would later go because of change in term of services and removed from, they would be removed from the Play Store because Google changed like the terms of services. So all kind of monetization companies or advertisement companies or analytics companies would go like uh, bananas. They'd go like, hey, what the hell is going on? Uh, and then, and then like, they would need to find other ways, not necessarily so amazingly clever, but other clever ways to do things in a less obvious way, okay? So this is one thing. Another thing is of course that like each application uh, can expose the backend, like the server side, to all kinds of risks because you have an entry point to the corporate and usually now there's of course more awareness of security but usually the security mechanisms for such games, let's put it this way, would not be so amazing, okay? And what is the problem with this? How people actually make money, then I'm going to like, of course, discuss it a little bit more. So when there are a lot of money that is involved, then there is more motivation to do all kinds of fraud. And I'm, t I'm talking, when I'm talking about like the gaming industry, or like the advertising industry or monetization industry, I'm talking about more than $10 billion a year, according to some researches that I can provide sources for, okay? So the problem is that there are a lot of frauds Things are vulnerable. The development model is literally based on either open source or third party or both uh, components. And it is a problem. It brings much more risks that are either apparent and clear or not. This is problem number one. Problem number two I already mentioned, that even if all the application and frameworks are perfect, 
you can go ahead, jailbreak your iOS device, root your Linux device, and do whatever you want with the operating system. And it's so easy, and it's so, like, it's so ridiculously easy sometimes that some people make, made very good business of it, like for the last couple of years, even for just, you know, helping people to analyze such things or to do such things. So, in the mobile ecosystem, who, who are the players? Who's playing? What's going on? So we have, of course, the hardware manufacturers, right? Then we have all kind of software vendors that also help the hardware manufacturers. And when you have, like, when you hear about companies that I will, like, not mention, that they sell devices that have backdoors inherent in the devices, this is part of this, okay? And uh, device manufacturers, like, they integrate these two things. Carriers, retailers, like Singtel, uh, Starhub, um, people who sell devices, and they always put their own things. Even if a lot of devices are just bought directly, then the phone companies still play a part, okay? And then there is the application developers, and presumably all of these fellows, their goal in life is to provide for users, because if there weren't users, Google and Apple would not be making money and then there would be nothing. So this is why application developers are also important and so on. Now in users, there are the users that are important, that are legit, and there are non-legit users that are humans. What do I mean? That you pay people. Uh, did anybody watch, for example, the South Park? Who watched your South Park? Good, so you know, you're laughing. You know what episode I'm talking about now, right? Like where Butters, where Professor Chaos hired people to do shaming on Facebook? Did you see that? <laughs> so people hire like all kind of like human uh, farms, let's put it this way, to do all kind of things. Like to click, to answer the polls, to, to install applications, to do all kind of things like that. And this is how things work. Like just like people work, talk like a, in, in, in politics, like a, to, they pay people to do, to post things on Facebook, on Twitter, they pay people to, to reply, to do all kind of like a talkbacks. Like it's a paid industry. It's an, and a lot of people unfortunately do that, okay? So they're non-legit, but they're human. Well, what is the problem here? That you need to figure out that they're not legit. I mean, other things, that are users are like if you make an application that you want to test it. So you would do all kind of automation scripts, maybe you will record yourself and replay and stuff like that. And the last one, which is a combination of uh, the last two one, crossing out the human word, is all kind of non-legit uh, automated stuff or bots. So when we talk about the victims, the victims can be the device itself, what's on the device itself, and it can be what the device communicates with, that is the backend. So let's talk now a little about some types of bots, like what we have. So one type of bot is off-device scripts. And the off-device scripts have no device. So the only thing they can attack is the backend themselves. And if we had a way to identify that there is no device, then we're done. We just block all traffic from non-device, we send a big guy or a big girl to beat the <laughs> recorded out of a, whoever we automatically identify it is and problem is done, right? The other one are on device scripts. Then there is a problem, okay? Uh, because we can target things on the device itself, like the applications themselves. Maybe other applications, depends if we have like sandbox escape or if the device is compromised or something like that. Maybe the device itself is not necessarily a script, but like does the automated work and like sends everyone, everything that I do or have or something to other companies. Maybe yes, maybe no. And actually, we actually get like for developing such things, we get help from Google and from Apple. Why do we get help? Because we are developers, so we, want, we get all kind of things to test our application, to do automation, so we can use it to actually do things that are not legit. The next category is a category that is like, a, it's malware, okay? Malware that is able to achieve a sandbox escape or malware integrated in the platform itself that targets specific things. 
And the last one is basically also on the device itself, but results basically usually from having like some SDK that is integrated and does all kinds of things against us. Now, off device scripts, I already mentioned like pretty much all of this, but uh, the nice thing about them is that they can aid us to do penetration testing to the servers and it's easily protected against, okay? Now, there are well-known protections that are written here that is mostly authentication of some ways, but the authentication needs to be good enough to prevent all kinds of replay attacks. It's not a real problem, this problem is solved, okay? On device script, as I said, the main problem is that you cannot trust the operating system. It is a problem. Another problem is that even if you have things that are super legit, application can be repackaged. And then this could be very problematic. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about all of the attack vectors. It also depends if somebody has access to the device, if somebody doesn't have access to the device, if you trust, if you don't trust, be happy to give you such a list of like exceptions and cases like after the talk, happily. Um, but this is the target of like, if we talk about solutions, of all kinds of solutions that do uh, behavioral analysis. Like they want to see, hey, it's on the device, but is it a real user or not? Cross sub vulnerability, sandbox escapes, and it can do all kinds of things that are not very, very, very nice. It can be the target of like antivirus or anti-malware tools. But here is the problem, both in iOS and in Android, these tools are essentially not effective because unless you sit in the platform itself and you have access privileges, you cannot, you cannot obtain a lot of things. Like you cannot really get that, you cannot hook, you cannot interpose, and they cannot do things like antiviruses do like on the PC world, okay? You need cooperation from the platform level. You just have to do it. How does an antivirus work? Like in Windows. You inject some kernel modules and it does all kinds of things. You have to. That's how it works, okay? Okay. Now, for on-device, in-app vulnerabilities, of course there can be all kinds of bugs for the developer, okay? But mostly there are all kinds of malicious SDKs and there is a combination of all kind of these problems, okay? So there are some solutions for each one of the problems that I mentioned, but nothing is perfect. Now, in the past, as I mean, like in the mobile, in the non-mobile case, okay, then how did people develop things? They would have their own software. They would have, if it's like big companies, they would have companies working on this library, companies working, uh, sorry, teams working on this library, teams working on that library, they would integration between the teams, they would purchase uh, libraries from other providers maybe, and so on. And then if someone got into the way, for example yesterday if somebody attended Alex talk here, like he mentioned about uh, a compromised uh, Visual Studio linker that would just inject like the same malware to everything it compiled with. So this is like a kind of tool and if somebody like got in the way, then game over. It's done, okay? But otherwise, like everything was built on trust. What about making money on this kind of development model? Then it's pretty obvious. Either paid licenses, in-app purchases, ads, if like nobody charges something for none. And when you talk about ads, then there are all kind of affiliate networks, aka the notorious toolbar industry, the notorious installer industry, which all of them would sooner or later be related to notorious malware industry, okay? Uh, I, I don't commit for everyone, but <laughs> there are enough cases that are related so that we can be convinced about it. Now, what happens in the present day that is in the mobile? So basically, most of the application we download are free, right? Why would we pay? Why would we want to do that? So basically, there are free applications that needs to be monetized somehow. And for monetizing it, application developers are usually going to be using third party. And the third parties will be having all kind of analytic tools, trackers, install trackers, and so on and so forth. 
And no developer is really going to check, oh, is something fishy about it? <laughs> Never, okay? So there are two categories, two main categories of it that are either free and not open source tools, SDK that we integrate. Maybe it's an SDK and maybe it's like just, you know, hey, call this script and we'll do it on the server. This API calls and we'll do it on the servers. It's also perfectly legit. And basically, another thing that we'll have is that like a, sorry, what did I miss here? Oh, okay, and basically, uh, basically what we're going to have is like a lot, a lot of these SDKs, both for like checking ourselves and like for profiling ourselves and seeing what's going on with the user, but also for monetizing, that is popping up, hey, would you like to install these apps? So that when clicking these applications or when looking at this, what's known as like impression, then, or for watching some video, then the de application developer will get some money. So, in the mobile ecosystem, essentially there are many things that have to do not necessarily with the application themselves, but also with other things. So, when we talk about providers of apps, they don't necessarily care about security, what's happening there. When we talk about device, security, they also don't care too much about what happens in the devices themselves. We want to sell hardware, that's the way it is. If you talk to any IoT company, embedded company that manufactures products, I can guarantee you that in most cases, they will say, hey, okay, I just wanna sell my chip, I don't care about security. Because that's what they do. If it's like more like bigger company and not just a manufacturer, then maybe they will care, but like, the first one will say, okay, let the integrator take care of uh, problems. I don't care about it. So basically, um, the main problem, main, main, main problem with the mobile is that you can replace the operating system and do whatever you want. And then your power is like unlimited. You can do whatever, whatever, whatever you want. So just a quick recap, like who are the consumers of possible solutions? Enterprises in all kinds of ways. The, the original equipment manufacturers. So for that, they might want to have like anti-analytics, anti-hooking techniques or stuff like that. Selling to OEMs is very, very, very tough, by the way. Uh, it's a bad business model in many, many, many cases. Other things, application developers that would not care about security at all unless it affects their money, okay? And essentially, if we look at how money can be affected, then it's pretty much the same as with the PC or desktop case. Um, but affiliate networks pay a much, much more important role because there is like much less paid for software, okay? Another thing, in-app purchases, with the exception of like games when you like buy expansion packs in the PC, then in-app purchases are super, super, super important. And then comes something that does have to do with like stealing credit cards and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into too much details. I wanted to show like a showcase of a really big company that is, let's say our consulting client, like we have product deploys there. That one of the things that like really, really, really bothered them is that people use credit, stolen credit cards when they register like for an app they do a legit payment one time or two times, like and convince existing solutions that like, okay, it's a legit user, he paid. And later on, they're abusing their system to do all kinds of other things. So you need, it's called like the, the seven day problem or the one week problem. Whoa, practically is critically low. I can swear I connected it, hold on. Are we good now? Yeah, okay, sorry. Take it off at editing. Singapore, like you have, the, you always have to turn on like the thing close to the electrical socket, why? <laughs> Some people are not from here, they aren't aware of these things. Okay, but I saved the day, 4% and I saved the day, huh? All right, so basically, there is a seven day problem, or like the one week problem that like uh, people register and at the beginning, they're legit, and after seven days, whoa, like hell freezes over and there are problems everywhere and everybody can do whatever they want. So these things are very, very, very problematic. And when you talk about like the, the ecosystem, 
Uh, in mobile, basically we're going to have like the users at the right hand side. There is going to be somebody, like publisher, that the application developer somehow works in some SDK to make money from it. The publisher will have another publisher and the publisher will have another publisher and a campaign provider that aggregates things for like the service requester, which will be like a company that wants to sell their apps and will have a budget. And budgets can be huge, like per game it can be, let's say, two digits, like with millions easily, like over 10 millions easily for like a new campaign of game. There's a lot of money in the industry, a lot. And everyone in this chain could have like incentive to to steal money, like to have fraudal transaction. So basically, there is a lot of things like that, okay? So there are reasons to do things. And we don't have too much time left, so I'm going to talk about some of the attacking patterns and some of the defending patterns, and after the talk I'd be happy to talk about it more because I don't like to wave hands, I talk, like to talk about real things, okay? So essentially, some of the potential problems for like preventing like all kind of automated uh, illegit behavior would be um, all kind of like SDK testers or like open source testers, I'm not going to name companies but I could, um, preventing repackaging and verifying anti-tempering the repackaging which for like application stores for some countries are not relevant because they're based on repackaging, okay? And they're huge countries with a lot of users. Uh, insurance, of course. Testing, penetration testing as a service and analytics and stuff like that. And to be honest, there is a problem with deployment of solutions because everybody wants to not be intrusive. They're afraid that like solution would cause the crashes or like bad performance and then users will uninstall the app and then they don't make money. So speaking about like uh, some attacking pattern, I can tell you that when I started working on these things, like in 2014, uh, I, I had an idea that did virtualization, a, a company that did a virtualization of Android and I was testing a lot of things, so I developed a lot of automatic tools. In particular, I had like emulators or Android device farms that were able to, I were able to run a lot of Android devices virtualized and I was able to do all kinds of things and I told myself like, hey, I could productize that and I could, techniques that I use like to do penetration testing for mobile ecosystem, I could go ahead and like make a business of it. But all my colleagues that uh, said that, ah, it's not a good idea, nobody will buy it and all like the investment firms thought that it's not a good idea. So now we're recorded, so I'm not going to say what I want to say, but uh, I will say it anyway. Uh, I'll say it later, okay? So basically, um, this like making a product out of it, although today there are several such automated penetration testing, blah, 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 blah companies, was considered to not be a good idea. And it's not surprising because like um, a lot of investment firms are made a lot of idiots work where a lot of money exists, okay? It's a well-known fact, everybody knows that, half of the people are smiling, it is how it is, okay? So basically, this led to some ecosystem and infrastructure that somehow along the way, I ended up like doing some things for companies and used this infrastructure, okay? Now, one of the nice things that you could do with like, if you are able to like scale things, would be to actually go ahead and do like these automated farms and you know, the client is legit, the client is mobile and everything is okay and you can like check the backend. So essentially, the idea was going to do massive scale, do fuzzing, do penetration testing and do other things that are very, very, very common for uh, both the scale testing and the penetration testing industries in the old market, okay? Now, in the mobile system, uh, we identified a couple of years ago a problem that again didn't interest anyone. So let's say that we made a little bit of money in legit ways. If anybody wants to hear an interesting story, talk to me after, okay? Uh, but there are all kinds of things that are used to track users. 
And trackers are a huge, huge, huge business. There are at least two huge trackers that almost any mobile application would have one of them to verify that application has been installed or stuff like that. And they always have all kind of like a parameters that are like always used. In Android, for example, it would be like advertising ID, Google advertising ID, um, like location, geolocation, IPs, stuff like that. If it's a browser, user agent, all kind of things that you can like fake either on your application level, like user agent, everybody can fake a user agent on an HTTP request, or you can go ahead on, on, and on your platform itself, fake whatever the application like things. And if you're able to manufacture, uh, if you're able to manufacture, to, to manufacture such devices, then you're good. So essentially, the problem becomes, uh, what if one is able to go ahead and attack those mobile networks in a way that is like interesting? So the answer, the virtualized answer, means this. All right, we can do it. Let's do it. Instead of having just one user trying to do all kinds of things, we're going to use virtualization techniques in order to super scale ourselves, okay? So this is really, really, really nice for penetration testing. And it happened to be very, very, very nice for like real life attacks, especially because let's say that a lot of the monetization industry, and I don't want to offend anyone because I'm recorded, is unbelievably stupid. And like uh, attacking them like is unbelievably easy simply because nobody cared for years, okay? So really, nobody cared until 2017. Nobody cared completely. You could do whatever you want. Like if you'd go and like start a session from the same IP all the time, you would be identified. But wow, what a smart defense. There is always something smarter to do, okay? So the idea for scaling is one, power, unlimited power, right? So power is rooting, okay, or jailbreaking. We're out of time. So if you do that, application will not know, will not care, end of story. No matter how much somebody checks for protection, they will never outsmart the OS, you're done. So on real devices, you can do it. And it means like you root the device, but how many devices you can do? So you have scale problems, okay? So on fake devices, you can do whatever you want, but it's not so easy. Like you need guys like me that have a lot of experience in OS internals and ported things like that, and in particular, did a lot of Android work, or beginning two years ago or one year ago, take advantage of Apple open sourcing Xnu, which is the Xnu, the Xnu kernel, to bring something like if anybody ever knew Open Darwin or like ran Mac OS on a virtual machine, then there are all kind of projects like this that you can run Mac like on your PC. So now you can run also iOS on your PC on some extent. So there are actually very, very nice tricks about it that has to do if you have an x86 machine with the iOS simulator that you can like extract the binaries from there if you want to like simulate x86 stuff. The problem with x86 is that iOS binaries would not work as is. And now that Apple open source Xnu, you can also virtualize this, and this is pretty, pretty, pretty nice. This is why I said it, it's like hard to achieve. So this is one thing, the unlimited power, okay, of the device. The other thing would be like, okay, how do you manage that? So like a suggestion for like scaling, once you manage like to create one device, is to go ahead and spread it like over all kind of geographies, over all kind of cloud providers, over all kind of anything. And yes, also combine real devices with that, okay? Um, I'm going to have to, like, to recap very, very, very soon. So let's talk about some solutions to, um, potential solutions to the problems, which is something that I really don't like saying. So I'll put the two images that I put from before, okay? The idea is, the basic idea, the nice thing that I like saying is that one can use the exact mechanisms of attacking to actually create a classifier that defends against some of the attacking. Now, those who understand things will say, hey, but you would do overfitting, like you defend, only against, you defend only against your attacks. But it's not necessarily true, okay? Because there are all kinds of things that you can do, and taking into advantage that data that is like real, and like from your users. So, yeah, like supposed solution is like building classifiers. So it's these things again, and 
now he also has like fire because not just really pissed off the Disney guy. And the idea is like this. The idea is to do something that like actually learns things from real device experience, combines like data set. I'm not going to say exactly how we do it. That happens also both for like automated tool and from real life experiences with the permission of the developers. So we get data, both from bots that like we build, both from like a device, a, let's say SDK feature that is done when the application or actually the application developers are testing themselves. And the last thing that like we do is that we actually also go ahead and with the consent of the application developers, and gather analytics like on the field like from real users. So we take this into advantage, we build classifiers and there are solutions and this, like I don't lie, I say that we offer some things as a service. There is no, I was talking to a friend earlier today and I was saying that there is absolutely no company in the universe that can say hey, we have one day of deployment once we have huge data to process. So we don't even offer this as a product, only to customers we already work with, um, because we need months to get things going, because this is life, okay? So essentially, we go ahead and we achieve several things together, just like we leveraged our, we leveraged our skill set, let's put it this way, of like wanting to do this penetration testing, nobody cared, we found some way to do other things, now people do care, but we do this and other things as well. And like, uh, this is what we do. Like we check all kind of things. Uh, if something is off the device, I'm just going to, I'm give, going to give you our solution for free. It's not even a problem. Like for identifying what is legit and what, what is on device and what is not device. I mean, you have three axes, right? And like the earth rotates and there's like physics. Like you can go ahead and figure out that physics law exist and now I could go and say oh but I can go ahead and like fake the measurement sensor stuff like that the word is continuous the word is not discrete there are ways to identify it 100 percent no false I mean shoot me now if I'm lying okay you need to be unbelievably smart and dedicated and nobody is that dedicated maybe that smart but that dedicated no okay and for things that are off devices we learn and we do all kind of things and I mean, it's really, really, really achievable. So it's pretty nice. So given like the power, unlimited power uh, construct that we did earlier, we are actually able to go ahead and you know do this on the one case and scale like with the virtual machines and stuff like that. And this is the time for some thank you notes. All right, so I'd be super happy to take some questions if somebody have, although we are after time. Anybody would like to ask something? In private is perfect as well. Okay, so thank you so much for attending and I'd be super happy if I'm going to see some of you again next week uh, in the ARM exploitation training that we're doing as part of InfoSec in the city. This would be fantastic. If you need anything, this is my email. I'm going to be in Singapore until the 30th of June uh, or until the 1st of July pretty much the same. And I'd be happy to have you there. Like there is a chance, these are like the next courses that are planned in Singapore. And um, there is a chance that on, that I will stand till the 4th of July because some people asked to do some kernel development course. And if we secure two or three more people, then I can guarantee that it will happen. So be happy to stay more. And please uh, let me know like if you liked what you heard and if you interested in some things. Would be very, very, very happy to, if you have interest in doing such things, such solution yourself, to give you tips from the only one reason that we, I'm, we're probably never going to be like a product company. Like we do consulting for some gaming companies that do kind of stuff like this. They say, oh, we're going to do our own solution. And we help them, like why not? We don't care. All right, so thank you friends. <laughs>